been a while since the last time we had a numbers video and what better occasion than this one choice hotels announce a brand new credit card and as you can imagine we can just present this credit card we're gonna compare it to every other credit card of its kind two things about this first uh thank you Luke at uh, Luke's points and miles uh, you're the one that brought this credit card to my attention and everyone that wants to see specifics on this credit card like uh, hotels what kind of hotels choice offers and all these kind of things they should go to Luke's video because he's talking on details on this one we're going to talk only numbers here here. Uh, plus he's talking about both credit cards the existing non-annual fee credit card the only one that we're gonna see in today's video is the annual fee credit card so a couple of things about hotel credit cards as long as they have an anniversary night then you can bet uh, it's a keeper uh, it's a matter of preference and how much money you're willing to pay on annual fees and how much chasing you want to do to get all the credits and all the points uh, that you might be able to get with this credit card uh, also, what kind of hotel chain serves the areas you're typically visiting? As you guys know, I love Hyatt, but Hyatt is probably, not probably, it's the most, it's the smallest hotel chain in this list. So keep that in mind. It, it, preference, uh, needs, everything changes. And of course, I have the expected uh, points value on this video. But this is just an indicator. Keep that in mind. For example, Hyatt, I have it at 1.8 cents per point, and I regularly get 2.5 to 3. So I know that many of you do the same with Hilton, with Marriott. Uh, I did bump up a couple of hotel chains. So we will see as we go through the presentation, uh, but keep that in mind. So it really depends on your specifics. And with that in mind, let's jump to today's presentation and come back to wrap it up. So keep in mind that for the first year, what we're trying to do is just hit the minimum spend to get the sign up bonus. So the returns that you see here are based on just that. If you use a credit card in any other case scenario, of course, your returns will be different. Uh, the first credit card we're going to see is the IHG Premier Rewards. Um, 140,000 points after spending 3,000 in three months. Uh, credits, $100 TSA pre global entry, one anniversary night up to 40,000 points. And this is crucial because they do offer points, which means that you can add to these points and upgrade your reservation. This is something that not all credit cards are doing. And on top of that, fourth night free when booked with points. So it gives you a good incentive to get points. Um, no other credit card is doing this in this list. So yeah, we will see how this affects the numbers later. Uh, memberships, Platinum Elite, this is high, no lounge access, multipliers, 26 um, IHG, uh, 5X on gas, travel, restaurants, 3X on everything else. The return on spend for the first year is 28.11%, 28. The Marriott Brilliant, 95000 after spending 5000 in three months. That's a whole lot less than last time's video. That was $150,000. $300 dining credit, uh, which, of course, is $25 a month. So it doesn't make sense to me, but I know many of you love it. Uh, $100 property credit, a minimum two nights at the very expensive hotels like Ritz-Carlton etc $100 global entry TSA pre one anniversary night up to 85,000 points this is pretty decent Marriott Platinum which is somewhere in the middle uh, plus 50% more points when you uh, redeem on Marriott lounge access priority select up to two guests no restaurants typical American Express uh, multipliers uh, 21x on Marriott 3x on airlines restaurants uh, worldwide uh, rentals, American Express companies, partner companies, 2x on everything else. The return on spend is 16.67, 17%. The world of Hyatt, 30,000 points after spending 3,000 in three months. We're not going to get into the whole bonus uh, scheme here because it's like 2x on everything else up to 30,000 points, um, which is not a good way to spend your money. One anniversary night up to category four. Discoverist uh, is the membership, which is low. There's no lounge access. Uh, 9x on Hyatt, 2x on travel, 2x on gym, 1x on everything else. 
the return on spend is 21.92 so 22 percent i have to say here that the return on spend on the spending is based on an average so i'm not taking the highest case scenario here for example in this case on marriott i'm not gonna say 9x therefore the 233 dollars it's for travel for example it would be 9x plus 2x in this case plus 1x divide by 3 so that gives me a much more moderate multiplier which i think is more realistic we're looking at the hilton aspire everybody's favorite and my next credit card most likely 150,000 points after spending 4,000 in three months 250 dollars airline credit for incidentals 250 dollars resort credit 100 dollars on property credit that's again for expensive hotels like the world of astori and conrad one anniversary night a weekend anniversary night so friday saturday sunday and there's no limit on what kind of hotel it can be it doesn't matter diamond status which is the highest priority pass select up to two uh, guests no restaurants again typical american express uh, the multipliers 34x on hilton 7x on uh, airlines rentals through american express uh, partner companies 7x on us restaurants this is something that really annoys me it should be worldwide this is a travel credit card and they do have all these properties almost 7,000 properties around the world so 3x on everything else return on spend 30.47 30.47 incredible parenthesis here it's important to see how many properties each hotel has so we're looking that all of them basically are about six to seven thousand properties and only hyatt my personal favorite is only about a thousand so yeah and now it's time to see the new kit in the block which is the choice privileges select and in this one we're looking at 90,000 points after spending 3,000 in three months there is a 30,000 point credit annually so it's the same like IHG they give you points instead of a free night up to a certain specific category so in this case you could also add points and possibly upgrade your stay a $100 TSA pre global entry platinum elite which is high is the status and with that comes the avis preferred plus so rental company car rental company there's no lounge access 22x on choice hotels 5x on gas supermarkets home improvement stores all phone plans so cell phone and land and 1x on everything else and i have to say that the multipliers here are very very useful if you manage to redeem this and stay in 0.6 cents per point to something higher then you're looking at 5x really on gas who else has that i mean stable not not rotating like the chase credit card 26.93 almost 27 percent is the return on spend for the first year it's just incredible but as we know what happens in the first year is one thing what happens in the second and every year after is another and we're looking always to apply our imaginary budget of twelve thousand dollars equally spread between travel restaurants gas and groceries and we see that with that the ihg premiere uh, drops to 4.37 uh, percent return on spend but this is the minimum because i'm not using here the scenario where you could have an extra fourth night free if you book with points in this case i did the math for that it would be six percent so this 4.37 would be six percent with a 200 dollar extra night so keep that in mind it could be the second it looks like it's the last right now but we'll see that later the bonvoy brilliant we're looking at 4.99 uh the hyatt 466 and the hilton 966 so practically 10 percent it's incredible and this is mainly these uh, differences because i bumped the uh, points value to 0.6 instead to 0.5 uh, many of you kept telling me you're getting a whole lot more than 0.5 i haven't seen it so because i take your word into consideration i bumped it up a little bit and last we see the choice uh, select the choice select is 4.05 so four percent return on spend which is still pretty decent and keep in mind that this gives you annually points you can add to that and upgrade to something better 
I think it's a good deal, especially if you live in an area where choice hotels, typically Midwest, from what I've seen, uh, they're everywhere in the world, but typically Midwest, it's an incredible deal. Looking at them next to each other for the first year, we see that number one is the Hilton Aspire, number two is the IHG Premier, number three, what a good surprise is this one, uh, Choice Select, uh, World of Hyatt is fourth, and fifth is the Marriott Brilliant, and then for the second year and every year after, Hilton Aspire, number one, number two, the Marriott Brilliant, number three is the World of Hyatt, number four is the IHG Premier with an asterisk, and number five is the Choice Select. Now, few things here first if you run a chase ecosystem so if you have the chase trifecta it will be a whole lot easier and better for you based on return on spend to transfer your points to Hyatt so this doesn't say the whole story we're using this as standalone credit cards we saw videos before where we just use it as uh, a travel credit card for the its intended purpose so we know we can get a whole lot more if we do that kind of usage but um, if you run a nice Chase setup, then the world of Hyatt is a no-brainer for you, especially if you like Hyatt and if they serve your locations. Um, the IHG, there's no way they're not going to serve your locations. And on top of that, if you're willing to do the spending on it, then you can get the fourth night free. And in that case, that 437 is going to become a 6% and that immediately will bring it to number two just behind the Hilton Aspire, which is incredible to think for a $99 annual fee credit card. It's just incredible. The one thing I really like is that Wells Fargo seems to be adding more and more credit cards lately that interest me, like this Choice uh, Select is actually a very decent credit card. I already have uh, the built um, and I've been very happy with it. Actually, I have a bunch of points just paying rent with that. Um, so. Keep that in mind that Wells Fargo secretly keeps coming up. I don't like Wells Fargo at all. I mean, I think it's worse than even Capital One, uh, but that's my personal opinion. I'm based on customer service and based on personal experience, but I see them coming up and that creates competition and competition, as we know, is very good for us consumers. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, what hotel chain do you like the most? Which of these credit card makes the most uh, sense for you. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one. Ciao.